Hello, welcome to the Job Help Hotline. My name is William Molina and I will be your host today for today's program. Today we're featuring the Greater West Town Community Development Project which has a uh, woodworkers training program. So today I have a guest, Mr. Charlie Negron. How are you doing, Charlie? Thanks, William, for having me on. Okay, it's great to have you here. Uh, if you're looking for a job, if you're looking for work out there, you, the market is still very competitive and you need that assistance and that special training in order to have a skill that will help you in, in, in that endeavor. Greater West Town offers a woodworkers training program which is very comprehensive and it has so many facets to it that will help make you marketable when you go out there looking for work. So Charlie, why don't we begin by you telling us a little bit about uh, what working, when, when did woodworking start? How long has it been in this program being around? Well, um, I believe the program started in 1992. Mm -hmm. So if you do the math, it's close, yeah, so, to, close to 30 years. So it's been um, around for a long time. Yeah, um, been around for quite a while and stuff. And I think we have over 800 graduates wow. of our woodworker training program out wow. there in the field. And when you say 800 graduates, we're talking about a lot of success stories there, right? You're talking oh, about yeah. We have about, I would say about 80. Since the span of 1992 to now, we have a 85% placement rate. Wow, 85% placement rate. That's amazing. So before I get into the details of the program, what type of jobs can people get going through the woodwork training program? Well, there's five, five fields that they could get into in mm -hmm. wood manufacturing. There's um, lumber yards, right? There's uh, architectural mill work. When people hear that, they're like, what, what, what in the world is that? Yes. That's wood products that you see that's kind of bolted down that can't go anyplace. Um, the best image I could give you is probably a church where you got all of these wooden panels and pews and stuff like that. It's mm -hmm. not movable. That's architectural mill work with the beautiful, you know, windows that are art and okay, stuff. Okay, the fancy stuff. Yeah, so the all nice the fancy stuff. stuff that can be moved. Mm -hmm. um, musical instruments. Um, there is a company um, located not that far from us that supplies, I would say, seventy-five percent of the world's harps. That have uh, oh, wow. our matter of fact, our first. Uh, one of our first graduates from uh, the training class, um, the person is still there. Um, then there's uh, basic furniture making and then cabinets also. And, and you wouldn't think about that. You know, woodworking doesn't come to mind. I remember woodworking back in high school when we did a little wood shop and you might build a little shelf or something. But people uh, don't really understand the nature of how much woodworking is such a great part of our lives. Oh, wood, wood is basically everything. Um, so either from like framing the homes, right, um, the supplying lumbers that. We don't really, well, let me just backtrack a little bit. Sure, sure. Some, sometimes when people think wood and uh, woodworking, they think construction, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the same type of, of skills, but it's kind of a different field. Uh, construction, you're thinking about, you know, masonry, you're talking about electrical, you're talking about plumbing, uh, framing homes, you know, putting a roof on, things right. of that nature. Uh, woodworking is basically everything else that kind of supplies what goes in the homes. The cabinets, the flooring, the trim work. Um, all those types of wood products, so you know, countertops, things of that nature, um, the cabinets, the beautiful millwork, all those things are the woodworking. It aspect. sounds amazing, it sounds really fancy, and I hear all these, these technical terms and millwork and all that. Now, here I am, let's say, an average person, right? I, I, I hear what's, what's being said here on this program, and I say, Well, I want to I wanna do some woodworking. How, how would I go into that? You know, it sounds like a lot. How would I start? You know, what would I learn when I begin? So, what's the first step? What would I need to do? Well, let me. Let me give you a little bit of history in the woodworking in Chicago a little bit. Okay. Usually a lot of people started in, in the trade of woodworking back in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty typical. Uh, one thing that happened in Chicago is a lot of those trades started to leave the high school system. Right. Uh, for whatever reason, it could be insurance reasons, whatever. Yeah, you don't hear um, about it anymore. So right now, a lot of manufacturers out there are looking for that people with those types of skills. So when you're asking about how to get started, that was one way how people got started. They got their hands kind of, you know, and they got their feet wet a little bit in, right. in manufacturing and all of a sudden they kind of moved on to maybe the career if they really liked it. Here, this is a great step, it's uh, Greater West Town Project. Um, mm -hmm. That's a woodworker training program. We start off skills like if anybody doesn't, or somebody doesn't know any skills whatsoever right and we tend to start slowly and building up skills with basic power tools uh, basic cabinet construction blueprint reading math things of that nature and then as they go along the training program they start building up their skills and confidence levels using those different types of machines so the environment they're working in they're in a classroom setting am i correct exactly and then you have what uh, an industrial shop or we have a classroom right where a lot of the students will do a lot of the book work and mm -hmm. um I would say maybe about 40% of the time is class, classroom work. And then 60% of the time is basically you're working in a wood shop. So it's uh, a lot of 
traditional equipment okay. plus a lot of high tech equipment that we have integrated right. with uh, in the shop. So wow, you're talking about real hands-on experience. A okay. lot of hands-on experience. So uh, and, and as far as men, <clears throat> women, what's the ratio? I mean, is um, it for everybody or as long as a person's 18, it doesn't matter gender, right, okay. or age. Okay, great. Right? So we have a uh, person has to be at least 18. 18. Right? Uh, there's no upper limit. Okay. Uh, men and women. Um, both in the training program, we have uh, two women right now and a, and a few guys okay. in our training program. If you're listening to the program right now, we're talking about Greater West Town Woodworking Training Program, and it sounds like a fascinating program. We're talking about a, a vast array of skills. You're talking about uh, working with power tools, working in an industrial shop, getting all the training that is necessary for you to be able to enter into this field and be successful. I'm going to flash the number on the screen there so you can... Give us a call. It's it's at 312-563-9570. And when you call, somebody should pick up the phone and get information from you. And uh, they'll let you know when they're next. I believe you have an orientation coming soon, right? Right. We have a, orientations on Tuesdays. Every Tuesday there's an orientation. Okay. So and that's at uh, 845, I see as it says on the screen. 845 a.m., yes. So 845 in the morning, Tuesdays, there's orientation. So basically you come in. Uh, and, and what happens when somebody comes in to... Greater West Town for the orientation. Well, usually when someone's coming in, they have no idea what, what the training program is about. Right, so right. we as instructors, we're kind of setting the people down and we're giving them a lot of information, um, you know, what to kind of expect, um, how the application process is going to go. Right. Um, you know, what, what are the different steps? How are they going to be able to qualify? And then what we'll do is we'll take them on a tour of the shop. So right, um, right now, you, um, if you want, you can go ahead and flash on the... Um, the screen okay and you can kind of see what what happens so right now you have uh, students in the shop so when someone comes in they'll actually see a lot of the students right now working on projects so they really get a good idea of what to expect while they're in the training program so you'll see here we have a couple of females are actually operating the machines they're kind of setting it, uh, setting up a table saw and uh, students are kind of watching what's going on so that way they get a good feel of how to kind of change out saw blades and things of that yeah, nature. Yeah, and I can see that it looks like a pretty modern shop, and I believe this is the same equipment, right? Right, yeah, that's the same. Uh, that's the table saw, and again, you have a student kind of looking at uh, the product that they're cutting. Um, sh shop safety is a big component of what we teach. Uh, students uh, get a 10-hour OSHA card as they complete a uh, training program. Oh, great. Uh, so this, is again, it's just a typical machine. Okay, and... Uh Okay. That's, our, that's our Facebook page. That's so your you, Facebook page? Right. All right. So. so if you're looking at on Facebook, you can find us there. Um, you kind of see some of the projects that the students are working on. Um, great career start um, at our training facility. So if people are interested, you know, give us a call. That's the first step. Okay, great. So I see here, uh, what's going on here? I see a lot of paperwork. and. Yeah, so basically students are looking at panel, different types of panel products. Uh, so when you see, look at manufacturing, you're looking at wood products. Um, there's a lot of different products out there that students need to kind of learn if they're making either cabinets or countertops or any type of millwork. So that's what they're doing right now. They're kind of learning how to identify those. So things. it sounds fascinating. Well, what's the cost of this program? The cost is free for individual, but they have to be either low income. Mm -hmm. um, let's say they're unemployed, right, receiving unemployment, or maybe SSI, or Social Security, uh, mm -hmm. or maybe they're a family of four, and they got, you know, um, they're on a certain income okay. bracket, uh -huh. yep, that will qualify them for funding, so that way they don't have to worry about training costs coming out of their pocket. Great, so that means that they are not paying anything for the training, that means, ladies and gentlemen, the training is at no cost. Uh, is there any other perks that go with that? I mean, the, so let's perks, say I'm in the training, but I, I have to go to school, but I don't have money for the bus. Right. So, yeah, we, we as, you know, instructors kind of understand that people who come into the training program, they're sacrificing their time and, you know, uh, financially also as they're coming through the training program. So one of the things that we'll offer the, uh, them also is either a gas card mm -hmm. um, at the end of the week or a bus card to get them back and forth uh, through training. Um, job placement services are also included at the end of training. Okay. Um, we have, you know, a database of over 800 different woodworking companies out there, um, wow. and we'll try to get those uh, clients, you know, jobs working in the field. Now, it, it, let's say I'm not good with computers. I, I heard, is there like a CNC component to this? There is a CNC component. So I don't know if there, there might be some more pictures up there that uh, might show you the component. Well, let's go back to that and see what we can uh, find here. Okay. So, 
I see they're doing some type of filing work right here. Yeah, just just some basic uh, wood with some uh, solid lumber. So yeah, we do have CNC equipment. Um, the software is not the the. Oh, we have a student actually assembling a, a project there. That's a small little stool table that they kind of first work on. And you'll see solid lumber is a big component. Laminate works a component. So they're actually making furniture while they're there in they're, practice, right? Yes, yes. All of the projects that they're working on is geared towards uh, them learning s s certain skills. So we'll, when they get on the job, um, they'll be able to be comfortable using equipment and power tools. This is a, a certain type of uh, component to our training program is veneer work. Um, these are slices of uh, wood that's actually going to be taped together. Mm -hmm. um, once it becomes a full sheet, then it's going to be placed on a particle board substrate, and that'll be cut down to make uh, either a cabinet or something. Oh, so that's what gives it the unique design and different right, patterns, am right, I right? right? Yeah, so they're getting the beauty of the wood grain and stuff to go ahead and make those patterns. Okay, so if you're, you're hearing all, these all this fascinating information, um, you're talking about receiving training, you're talking about receiving a stipend for transportation, you're talking about all the support and everything that you need, you're working in an actual environment where it's comparable to that in the industry. Um, there, there is some classroom, now when people hear the word classroom they get nervous, so um, I haven't been in the classroom in years, so let's say I'm a little behind in math or whatever, so you guys provide support in that area as well. Right, right. So yeah, I know, um, you know, uh, for people who may have transitioned from one job coming into a training program and you know high school or college was a few mm -hmm. years back and stuff right. and all of a sudden math you know what, what's going on here um one of the things that's really important in this industry is math uh, just because you know cabinets need to be able to fit in the kitchen if it's exactly. a certain size you know everything needs to be uh, precise so you know math is a component and we're not talking about you know trigonometry or calculus exactly. or anything yeah. we're talking about you know basic you know uh Adding, subtracting, some division, fractions mm -hmm. is pretty, you know, pretty much required because we are reading tape measures and things of that nature. So now you're saying about what's required. So what do you look for in a student? What would a student need in order to be able to make it through this program? We're looking, the qualities that we're looking for is the qualities that an employer is looking for. Mm -hmm. Someone who's going to be reliable, prompt, you know, uh, dependable. Um, someone who's willing to learn, someone who uh, is not, you know, not worried about getting their hands dirty, right? Um, and a person who's going to be able to hustle. Um, so with those qualities, I don't see anybody who has those types of quality who's not successful in any type of career they choose. That sounds amazing. Now, let's say people that have challenges and stuff like that. So what do you think, was, what are some of the biggest challenges you face as far, or a student may face while they're in the program? The biggest challenge will probably probably be um, commute, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, a lot of people, you know, they're not, um, they're, they might be on public transportation um, and maybe, you know, outside of or close to some of the city limits of, of the burbs and they're getting, you know, back and forth to training. So sometimes if they're coming on, you know, CTA or Peace Bus or Metro mm -hmm. and stuff, sometimes schedules might not be um, uh, favorable for them, especially right. during the winter. Yeah. Um, that's, I would say the biggest challenge mm -hmm. would be would be that. Now, let's say they go through the program um, now about getting a job. Tell us, tell us a little bit about that process. I finished the program, now what happens? So, well, before training ends, what we do is get the students together. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll ask them to bring some of the work history. We do resume writing with them. We do job readiness classes with them just to make sure that they're kind of ready for the interview process. Mm -hmm. Usually about week 12 into the training, uh, we'll go ahead and start maybe sending them out on interviews. Um, even if a student doesn't go to a job that has an open position, we do have employers that work with us and kind of know what we're about. Right. They'll do mock interviews with the students and okay. just kind of get them, you know, past those little first, you know, anxiety for job. So the employers assist in in giving a mock interview. So right. I believe then you guys must have an uh, established relationship with employers. Or right. How much of a part do the employers play in the role of uh, uh, making sure this program is successful? They're vital. Um, not only do they know about our training program, but they also assist in even bringing students on board. Mm. There's some employers out there who would maybe open up their shops in the afternoons to kind of maybe try out a student or two, oh, wow. um, to just to kind of get a feel for what they're like. Yes. Um, we also do tours of uh, oh, really? for our classes, so that way 
you know, the students get a good idea of what's out there. Um, they want to be able to kind of see what the working life is for a person who's right. um, on the job. They might actually see students who have gone through our training program maybe five years down earlier, um, maybe able to talk to those students, kind of see what they're doing, and kind of say, wow, you know, that person is at that point now, and he's making this wonderful stuff. Same so three, same so it sounds really comprehensive. So it's like, what's it, six months, a year? How long does it take a person to finish? It's 15 program? weeks. Oh, 15, 15 weeks only. Weeks. So 15 three, weeks, okay. About three and a half months. Okay. Right? Um, and if you think about three and a half months, in the beginning it might seem pretty long, but towards the end of it, it's like, it's not really a lot of time. Um, and just to let people know, I'm, I, I'm not building up pie in the sky. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Not, I don't want to give them this, you know, <laughs> can, everything's candy in the <laughs> right, industry. Right. Um, because they're not going to gain a lot of skills, but they're going to get enough skills to get their feet in the door, feet in the door mm -hmm. of a company and grow from there. Well, they're going to take that skill level and do all of these other amazing So, so basically you're providing a foundation exactly, so that way yeah. they can have to build a, on. A very good foundation. It sounds like a very solid foundation. Yeah. Now, what's the day like? What are the hours and how many days a week? Uh, it's five days a week, mm -hmm. Monday through Fridays, and we go from uh, 8 in the morning to 2.30 in the afternoon. 8.30 in the morning to 2.30 in the afternoon. Really good hours. Follows now, the up. industry does start, a lot of industries start at 6, even some of the clock in the morning. So this is kind of an early bird kind of right, right. Uh, a field. Uh, but for people who, you know, love thinking with their head, working with their hands, it's a wonderful field to get into. So what would you say to somebody that's sitting on their couch right now saying, wow, should I, should I? What would you say to them to encourage them to get to that phone and make that phone call? Um, if there's a person out there who is not doing anything and maybe they were at this point last year mm -hmm. just think if if you don't if you don't make that move now in a year from now you'll be wondering man i should have made that call mm -hmm. right but what a should have um, syndrome huh? ex exactly right <laughs> three months down the road uh three and a half months down the road they could actually have a job and a, a career path uh, for something that could last a lifetime and this is the Christmas season, Yes. so I say, give yourself the gift that keeps on giving. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we sound like a commercial here. That's, that's pretty good. So anyway, I'm flashing the number on the screen. It, it, this is amazing. It's, it's at no cost. They provide transportation. You're getting a hands-on experience and, and training, so that way it will prepare you. When you go out there for the world of work, you can hit the floor running. I think one of the biggest issues that people have is when they first start a job is not knowing what to do, and they get kind of nervous because they don't want to mess up, and they get like that nervous first day syndrome. And I guess with this type of training, and I, I think Charlie would concur, that once you have training and you know what you're doing, when you come into somewhere where you have a general idea of what's going on, I think it makes it a lot easier for you. And it, it, it makes it a, a, a success rate would be much better. I think that's why the placement rate is so well, so good. Um, if you're listening, today you could start that day. Today you could start that gift that keeps on giving. So it, it just it's Woodworkers at Greater West Town Training Partnership. The phone number is 312-563-9570. So if you give a phone call, somebody will be there to take your name, information, and set you up for orientations. And all orientations are on Tuesday at 8 45 a.m with the exception of this coming tuesday because i believe it's a holiday yeah, it's christmas i believe it's christmas day so don't come that day <laughs> santa will not be waiting for you make sure that you come the following tuesday at 8 45 and every tuesday from there on in we will be there uh, they will be there waiting for you to, to talk to you, to get your information, and set you up and, and hit, get the ball rolling. So um, it's a great program. Uh, retention, as far as holding a job, how, how long? You said somebody was on a job for many years, right? Am, am I correct? Well, ever since, yeah, the, since the first class. So you're talking about close to 28 years? Wow, um, that's a long a job, time. 28 you know? years on a job, yeah. that's amazing. Well, uh, all I have to say is this is a great opportunity for you. I'm going to let Charlie wrap this up by saying his last few final words and we'll say our goodbyes. We want to thank all of you for uh, tuning in and hopefully you'll pick up that phone call, pick up that phone, make that call so we can get the ball rolling. So Charlie, any last words you want to say to anybody out there? <laughs> sure. Uh, for the person who's out there and not sure of um, how this might fit into your schedule, give us a call. If you're not sure about what, where this is going to uh, take you, give us a call. Um, the only thing you could do is go ahead and maybe come in, get some information, kind of see what's going on. Um, 
will we'll go ahead and try to point you in the right direction. Um, this is ama an amazing uh, training program, not only basic skills, you get some computerized skills, you learn CNC equipment, you learn some 3D modeling. Wow. Actually, uh, we have virtual machines, so if you're kind of, a, kind of antsy about actual equipment, we'll go ahead and work with you with some virtual equipment first. Mm -hmm. So there's some cool stuff, you want to check us out. Um, and again, it's a holiday. <laughs> Give yourself the gift that keeps on giving. Well, there you go. Uh, we want to thank Charlie Negron for being on the program today. I want to thank you all out there for listening. Give us a call and make it start happening now. Have a great holiday.